P, your friend P. SWRC. DIY Auto School. Uh, fine work, my friend. And uh, love the Harbor Freight videos. Speaking truth to power as usual. And uh, enjoying those Mercedes videos. The videos on uh, this clown, Mr. Majestic. Excellent. Love all the body work and all your work. Learning a lot. Um, hell, I'm glad I have those videos to go back to, to review. It's like a classroom setting. Anyway, uh, Pete, you're doing great. God bless you and Minnie. And uh, love the clock. Love the clock. And... Uh, Love seeing all the good work that's happening in your shop. You're, I'm a devoted fan again, yet again. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, there's not enough time in the day, and your words are inspirational. And and when I go through my piddling here and there, and I'm a pauper, I guess you will, but I'm going to say uh, your words speak volumes to me, and you're always in my head. And any time I come, in, come into uh, some kind of issue, I remember your words. And it's just me. And I don't have, uh, I don't have a, a, a jack leg that can come along and help me. That's why, you know, any time I do things, if I deadlift the transmission or do anything, you come into my head. So anyway, God bless me. Uh, anyway. Uh, you're, uh, this is Tim uh, from the Dirty South and uh, I got your handle thank you, take care God bless welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. We're over here at SWRNC DIY Auto School, and I get a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls of people that want to paint their cars flat. Now, semi gloss, flat black, flat this, flat that. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to show you how to convert your paint, whether it's a single stage or a clear, into a semi-gloss or a flat finish. Uh, there's paints out there called Hot Rod Black and, and uh, Hot Rod This and Hot Rod That, and everybody's using this word Hot Rod, but it's really not a Hot Rod situation. What it is, it's a fad. And I'm sure that you've been to the car shows and you've seen these cars, whether they're orange, purple, or black, that they are flat. They don't have a super high gloss finish to it. And a lot of people do this because the body work ain't perfect. And, you know, sometimes it's in the long run, it's a little cheaper to do it this way. And they paint their cars to this hot rod flats, hot rod black, or, you know, multicolored crap. And, and then they leave it that way, and it's part of the rat rod culture. But I'm going to show you how to actually mix this stuff up and use it. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix it into the clear. That means we're going to paint base coat, clear coat. Now, when I do this, always keep in the back of your mind, if you've got some high gloss enamel or single stage paint, you can do the same thing. And let me show you what we're working on to do this. So what we got here is a 76 Mercedes-Benz. Now this was a rotisserie restoration and we're trying to bring it back to the natural 100% authentic vehicle that it was from the factory. I've replaced all the floors, all the steel structure on the bottom. I've done major major rust repair to it. I still got some rust repair. I got to replace quarter panels and other stuff to it. But on the deck lid of this vehicle when you open this up it isn't the same color as the car. What it is, is a semi-gloss black. Now, I can go buy 
some PPG, semi-gloss clear, and it's going to cost me $130 for a quart. I can go buy some hot rods flats, uh, the sim hot rod flat black or whatever you want to call it, and that's about $130. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to save $120 and I'm going to make my own semi-gloss clear to, what can we say, manipulate our way into characterizing the deck lid to what it was supposed to be like back in the 70s. So right here is our hood, and then behind that is our deck lid. Now this is the deck lid off of the parts car. And I want you to look at that real close, and you can see that it's not really a semi-gloss, and it's not really a flat. And when I say flat, I'm talking basically like the epoxy primer on this hood. It's kind of like in between. So we're going to go ahead and try to manipulate that to look the way that we want it to, just like that. Um, we're going to do it on the original deck lid. And uh, hopefully, it'll all come out right. So since I don't have any single stage paint here, and I'm going to go ahead and use base coat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go use this Deltron DBC Black. I'm going to go ahead and put two full wet coats on the inside of the deck lid. We're going to let that dry, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to take my clear, which is right here, and then we're going to add this product right here. Let me go ahead and get the base coat on the deck lid, and then we will go ahead and proceed to show you how to create your own semi-gloss paint, semi-gloss clear, very simple, very easy, and it will save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars doing it. So before we start painting, let's take a look at the deck lid. Now you can see I've already put it in epoxy primer. I went ahead and took a gray scotch bright and I scuffed it down, and I also went ahead and put my expandable foam into the skeleton structure so the outside of the deck lid wouldn't be floppy. So we're now ready to go ahead and apply two full wet coats of black paint. All right, I went ahead and applied my uh, two coats of paint. While that's drying, let's go ahead and move forward with our procedure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own semi-gloss clear. And you're going to need the clear that you use, which is this clear right here is what I'm using. And brands really don't matter. Everybody uses different clears. And then we're going to go ahead and kind of figure out in our head how much clear are we going to actually use. Because we don't want to make too much or we're going to throw it away. And then we also don't want to make too little. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up a half a quart. So I'm going to pour uh, a half a quart of clear into my can. Just like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my flattening agent. Now what this is, um, this is actually a flattener made by PPG. It's DX995. Now you can actually buy this by the court, but it's going to cost you $100. If you know the paint people at your paint and body shop supply store and you explain to them what you're going to do, they will normally either give you a pint off of their paint machine, which is their mixing bank, or... They will sell it to you really cheap. Now, it's not going to take this whole pint, but it's going to take approximately a half a pint. So I'm going to open that up. I want to show it to you, and you'll get a gander of what it is. And this is something that's really important. This is the most important step of creating your own flat, clear, or paint. Now, remember, if you're using a single-stage paint, you'll do the same thing. Now, you noticed I haven't ha I added any hardener at all. All I've added was the clear... And then if you look right here, I'm going to go ahead and add our flattener. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and I want to stir that flattener up to make sure that all of the compounds, and you can see this, the uh, PPG really has a high concentration of flattener versus other brands. And when I say that, when you pull the stick out, you can see that it's consistent all the way down to the bottom. That means that the solids don't separate from the liquids. And that's really important and that's one reason I use the PPG brand. Now what's really important on this is that when you pour this flattener in here you don't get any, I'm, let me get my arm out of the way there, I'm sorry. When you pour the flattener, son of a bitch I just dropped it. Okay let's take two on that. 
When you pour the flattener in here, you don't get any flattener around the edge of your can. If that flattener dries, and I'm going to show you because I just poured some here, and we'll also see it on the stick. If that flattener dries, it will turn to a chalky powder. And if that chalky powder gets into your clear coat or your paint, then when you spray it, it'll have all these little white specks everywhere. So it's very important when you pour that into here, you want to use a strainer or you want to cover the outside lip of your can. And one more thing, you notice that I'm mixing this up in a quart can. This is a brand new cork can. Here's the lid right here. And the reason we're doing that is because we got to shake this up super, super good. We want to make sure that this flattener is 100 authentically mixed in this clear before we spray it. And using a stir stick to mix that up ain't going to cut it. Because if you don't mix this up again, once again, if you don't mix this up, 100% thoroughly when you spray it, it's going to have little white specks of the flattener that has dried All right before it was mixed up thoroughly so that's very important and that's the most important thing that you can think of Now I got a half a quart here. So what I'm going to do and the way that I usually uh, Predict this is we got half so that would be let's say two We'll say three to one mix That's basically the mix that I use is a three to one, three to one and a half. I don't use a 50-50 because then it's just too chalky and it's too dry and it looks like epoxy primer. So what I do is I use a three to one mix, maybe one and a half. And you can see that I'm using a strainer with this. I don't want any paint getting on the edge of that can. And it's always important to use a brand new can. And the reason for that is, is because all the lid, you can see the lid's brand new, the can's brand new, we don't have anything around the edges. Okay, that's about one right there. So we're going to put just a little bit more in it. And I'm going to show you this as soon as we fill this thing up. So I put like uh, uh, three to one at 1 1.5 is what you can say I did. And another good thing is always use a strainer with this because there might be some dry uh, goblets in there and we don't want those getting into our clear or our paint. And when I get done doing this, I'm going to show you how fast this stuff dries. So if you look right here, where is it at? There it is. If you look right there, you can see the white chalky stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, there's white chalky stuff. That's the flattener when it dries. That is what you don't want to happen. And it even spilled right here. A little drop of it got right here on the edge of the can. Another thing I want you to look at, you can see how the flattener has separated from the clear because the flattener is more thick. Alright, so we're going to be very careful and we're going to put our lid on. We don't want to disturb that. We don't want it to splash. And then we're going to go ahead and shake that up to make sure that it is 100% mixed. While I'm shaking this, I want to go ahead and tell you, um, if you buy a quart of PPG semi-gloss clear, just like this right here, it's about $130 a quart. Alright? So we just saved ourselves a lot of money by doing this ourselves. This what I'm doing now is the most important step. This is the most important step right here in mixing your flat or semi-gloss clear or paint. Is to make sure that it's shaken very, very well and everything is mixed properly. Um, even when you buy it already pre-mixed, it requires that you mix it up just like I did because the flat the flattener will always separate and then you can see on the lid right there look at that you can see where it's starting to dry and turn chalky see if I can okay there's a little speck do you see what I'm saying so it's very important not to get that in your clear and now that this is dried let me show you the edge of this can 
Do you see that dry chalky white stuff? That's the flattener, so very important. Always use a clean can with a clean rim. If you get any on your hands, make sure you get it off because it will fall in here, and if it falls in there, you'll have a white speck. I'm going to go ahead. I noticed there's a little spot right here before I open this can to show you. I want to dry that off. I don't want that to fall into my clear. Okay, we'll go ahead and shake it one more time. What I'm doing right now, once again, this is the most important step in making your own clear. Now, this is going to be a semi-gloss. It might not be exactly 100% just like the factory but it'll be pretty close well you'll never know and the mix that I did one more time I put a 50 percent clear and I put a one and a half one and a half flattener the more flattener you put in it the more flat the clear or the paint will be now if you're gonna mix this with paint you won't even notice the difference but when you mix it with clear you can see now what the clear looks like so we're going to go ahead and take our clear and you want to be very careful pouring this into the cup, the mixing cup and we're going to go ahead and make a half a quart of sprayable clear and then what we'll have, and you see what I'm doing here, I'm trying to eliminate this flat clear from the lid of the can very important try to keep your can as clean as possible You want to try to get rid of all that clear out of there that has flattener in it. And this is still good, okay? We can still use this because why? We didn't put hardener in it. There was no hardener added to it. So if we got a small job that we need some semi-gloss clear, there it is right there. So now, if you look at it in the cup, you can see it's a milky white. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and proceed to add our hardener. Just like we would with any clear. And now what we've done, we've created a sprayable... situation that's going to give us a semi-gloss clear coat. One more time, you want to make sure that this is mixed up 100% thoroughly. Now normally when I use base coat, what I do, base coat clear coat, I want to go ahead and show you this. You see I haven't cleaned my gun out yet. Okay, so what I usually do is I Go ahead and pour my leftover paint in here, just like that. And then we'll save this for our next job. And then, let me get my arm out of the way. I always use a strainer with this. Do not pour this in your gun without a strainer. I use the residue inside the can, all right? There's the paint cup. I use the residue in the paint cup and I mix my flattener with that. That way it will tint our flattener clear just a little bit. Another thing you want to do is take your rag and make sure to wipe the edge off so you make sure that none of that flattener splashed on it. Because even one speck, especially on black, will ruin the paint job. All right, now that we got our clear mixed up, we went ahead and kept our black paint in there as a residue to tint our semi-gloss clear. Let's go in there, let's get a couple coats on it. Now, before I start painting, I'm just gonna let you know, I don't know if it exactly will be 100% exactly like uh, the factory deck lid, but it will be close enough that we'll manipulate our way to where it will pass and look like brand spanking new.
Well, I'm getting ready to put this deck lid on. I painted it the other day and uh, I went ahead and added some flattener to the clear. You remember you that old? Painted on the inside. Huh? Painted on the inside. Yeah, we're like that right there. Now, I don't know if it's going to look identically exactly like that because that's, you know, 40 years old. Let's go take a look and see what we got. All right, so we added the semi-gloss clear to it. And what do you think? Looks nice. We put, uh, I was showing everybody out there how to uh, take your clear or your paint and make it a flat, flattener additive type paint situation where you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So, what I did is I went ahead and painted this and make you put the camera up there. You can see it really doesn't have a shine. It's more of a semi-gloss. And this is a little more shinier. Um, if I would have added probably another part, if I would have added two parts instead of one and a half, we probably would have had just the right mixture. But being a brand new restoration, I think this is going to work and it's all going to look great. So, uh, you kind of get a look right there. Let's get the light here. And if you're in the market of using a semi-gloss or a flat hot rods type paint where you want to paint your hot rod, this is a good alternative doing it this way. You can see that it's not a mirror finish, but yet on the other hand, it's not a dull flat finish like our epoxy primer. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Giving you ideas, giving you suggestions how to save money and at the same time do a professional job. Um, as you notice, if you remember, I mixed that clear up in a brand new cork can. I didn't use it all. I still got a half a cork. But here's that chalky stuff we're talking about right there. Do you see that? Yeah. And I was telling everybody that this has to be mixed up super, super thoroughly because if they don't mix it up, when you spray it, it's going to have little white specks in it. And that's something we don't want. So that's a good tech tip for everybody. I hope you can use that. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. I got to get this Mercedes done. We'll take it easy. Or you take it easy. Do it right, do it right. Because if you're not doing it right, you ain't doing it at all. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything. Thank you.